Hello everyone! Today's video is one I'm very excited to share since it focuses on a technique and project that I've poured more than 100 hours into over the last two months. This technique is called beetle wing and it combines the use of beads, embroidery, and wings that belong to wood-boring jewel beetles. This technique originated in Asia hundreds of years ago and was used on garments and tapestries. During the 1860s, this technique featured heavily on the hems of skirts and matching accessories. The wings were cut and arranged into elaborate floral designs that are truly stunning. I will link some of my favorites down below. This year I decided I had enough patience and hand sewing skills to take on the challenge of a beetle wing embroidered skirt. And though I've already invested 120 plus hours into this project off camera, I thought I would share a bit of the process with you. This video will cover all the steps that go into creating this, along with answering some questions that I've gotten about the wings and what it's like to work with them. After looking at a lot of references, I drew out my own embroidery design, which is meant to resemble a stem. I also roughly drew in the wing placement so I could figure out how many wings I would need to complete the design. I traced this design onto my fabric using a water-soluble pen, then secured the material into a hoop to keep it taut while I worked. For this design, I used DMC floss in the color 3031. I cut the floss into 50-inch length, then separated the floss in half. This floss has six strands, and I used three for this design. After tying off the end, I began sewing. The stitch I'm using for this is called a split stitch. To do it, simply make a stitch, then bring the needle back up through the center of that stitch and make a new stitch. This creates a dense line that looks a little bit plumper than a back stitch would, but you could use a stem stitch or a back stitch if you prefer them. I used relatively large stitches for this and have lines of stitching on either side of the line I drew with the marking pen. There's a slight gap between the embroidered lines and this gap will be covered by beads later on. Since I had so much embroidery to do and since I'm very slow at it, I used larger stitches for this process. They aren't the prettiest but they get covered later on so I wasn't too concerned. However, I did keep my stitches small when making the cores of the flowers. Since these are small and round, large stitches would make them look more like polygons, which we don't want. If you're unfamiliar with embroidery in general and looking to learn more stitches in more detail, then I would recommend a few videos from Skillshare who have kindly sponsored today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 16,000 classes available. Their classes and videos range from embroidery basics to fashion design to pattern making, beading, and sewing. They also have videos on ribbon embroidery, which I was so excited to see since I've wanted to learn how to do it for ages. The classes tend to be longer and more detailed than most tutorials I've seen elsewhere, and they are broken into segments, so if need be, you can skip to the portions that interest you most. And if you've mastered the creative side of things and want to turn it into more than a hobby, we have thousands of videos focused on business and marketing. The premium membership gives you access to their entire library of classes, and you can watch as many as you want, either from a computer or from their app, even if you're offline. I will leave a link to all the classes mentioned in the description box down below, along with a sign up link and promo code that gives the first 100 people who use it a free 2 month trial. And if you enjoy it and want to continue or miss out on the code, premium membership starts at $10 a month. Now back to me embroidering away. The process for a single section of this took me 90 minutes to complete, so it was quite tedious. I'm also embroidering the base for beaded bugs. These are two acute angles that are slotted together to create a diamond shaped body for the bug. Then I embroidered a line down the center and two slanted lines parallel to the bottom edge of the bug body. Once all the embroidery is completed, I removed the hoop and gave it a thorough ironing. Also, for the sake of this video, I left this single section for last, but I would personally recommend completing all the embroidery on a piece before moving on to attaching beads and wings. This is the last stage where you can iron the fabric, and it's also easier to embroider when you aren't worried about catching the thread on embellishments. With that finished, it's time to select the wings you want to use. The wings range a lot in size, and there are left-facing and right-facing wings, so it can take a bit of time to find the ones that best suit the design. During this process, I lay the wings over my pattern and make sure the pattern is completely covered before moving on to trimming the wings. The only pieces I don't lay out are the wings used for the daisy-like flowers. For these I pick several dozen similarly sized wings, which I'll trim and store together, then pick at random when it's time to create the flowers. When all the wings I want to use have been selected, it's time to trim them. 
but I want to talk a bit about the texture of the wings and what it's like to work with them before getting started. As I said earlier, these wings belong to wood-boring jewel beetles and have a species name that I can't pronounce. <laughs> The wings have a natural two-tone quality, which is made more prominent by their domed shape. They feel a bit like press-on nails, but are thicker and more brittle. And by that I mean if you try to bend them, you will break them. But they are surprisingly strong. I think shell is a more appropriate name for them than wings, since they are quite thick and stiff. And to give you an idea of their longevity, these wings are known for outsurviving the fabric they are sewn onto. However, there are some wings, usually ones with light brown backs, that are almost papery in texture. These will tear and fold in half if you put any pressure on them. But these are definitely an abnormality. The majority of the wings are quite strong. To prepare the wings for sewing, I like to trim what I call the yucky beetle bits, which is the thicker pointy part on the back of the wings, which I'm assuming originally connected them to the body of the beetle. A bit of this sticks out and is visible from the front and it does not look pretty. So I remove it using scissors. Then using a sharp, very large sewing needle, I make a hole near the top of the wing and another hole in the center of the point of the wing. You don't want this hole to be too close to the edges since the wings are thinner at this point and can tear. I didn't have any issues with wings cracking as I made these holes, but the wings are more prone to bending and thus cracking where the holes are, so I tried to be careful when sewing them on and manipulating the material with the wings on it. Another thing I would recommend doing is having a soft pad underneath the wings. As you make the holes, this will support the domed portion of the wings and allow you to put pressure on top of the wings without them breaking. As I've said, the wings are pretty strong, but you are stronger than them, and putting a significant amount of weight on them is not a great idea. I definitely tried to avoid leaning on this project and watched my elbows as I was doing the sewing. Now for the cup-shaped flowers, I use five wings, and the centermost wing is cut to be shorter with a rounded bottom, and the rest of the wings are trimmed normally. The petals for the daisy-like flowers are also trimmed a bit more significantly. In addition to removing the ugly beetle bits, I also cut them to be shorter. And I do this by cutting straight across the bottom, then tapering the sides of the wings down. I found I could do this with normal scissors without the wings cracking, but you can't turn the scissors while cutting the wings. This causes them to crack. That's why I cut across the bottom, then trim the sides rather than doing it all in one motion. While I repeat this process several dozen times, I just wanted to mention where the wings come from since I got a lot of questions about that. I ordered them from the seller Caden on Etsy. The beetles are bred in and the wings are shipped from Thailand. The wings don't have any smell or coating to them and the bug bits that I've already mentioned are completely dry, so I didn't personally find them gross to work with. Granted, I am also the person that put part of a dead bird on a hat, so I might not be the best person to ask. I know that these beetles have a short lifespan of only a few weeks. Traditionally, beetles were bred for the wings, but not killed for them. They were only harvested after they died naturally. I'm not sure if this is still the case, and the seller hasn't responded to me about the subject. So if that's something that really bothers you, it might not be the best material for you to work with. I'm personally not very attached to bugs, and I don't feel it's any different than working with silk, which kills tens of thousands of worms for a single yard, but it's something I understand people feeling uncomfortable about. Once all the wings are trimmed to resemble petals, I poked holes in all of them as well. Now it's time to sew them on. I'm using three strands of embroidery floss for this, but normal thread should be fine too. I was just worried about the holes tearing, and I thought softer, thicker thread would help prevent that. The general technique for sewing on wings is starting from the bottom. Go up through the fabric, then back down through the fabric and the hole in the wing. Come back up through the fabric on the other side of the wing, then back down through the hole. Move your needle back up to the top of the wing and repeat the process. I'm beginning with a cup-shaped flower, and the first petal I sew down is the one I trimmed. This is sewn a quarter inch away from the stem and I'm securing the bottom first, then the top. Now I place a wing to the left of that, and the bottom of this wing should reach the stem, and there should be a slight gap at the top between it and the wing already sewn on. I secure the bottom of this, then sew the bottom of another wing onto the right side. Then I can use my fingers to nicely position the tops of the wings before sewing them down. Now another slightly larger wing is sewn on, 
The bottom of this wing should cover the bottoms of the other wings, and it flares outward a bit more than the others to help create the appearance of an opening flower. The final wing should be even larger, and this should overlap the bottom of the wing you just sewed on and create a nice arch across the bottom of the flower. Next up is a piece of foliage that requires three wings. The first is sewn on a quarter inch away from the end of the embroidered stem, and I'm securing the top and bottom of the wing. Then another wing is sewn on just below that, so the ends overlap. Adjust the second wing so it nicely flares away from the first wing, then sew it down. And repeat this process with a wing on the other side. Next up is a leaf involving five wings. Like with the other pieces, I start at the top of the foliage and secure the wing at the top and bottom. Then another wing is secured below that. I usually figure out the placement by putting the wing where I want it, then holding it with my left hand while I use my right to sew it down. You want to place these wings on an angle with the rounded edges facing inward to create the appearance of a leaf. Another wing goes just below that, then position the tops of the wings how you'd like, and sew these down. Jump over to the other side and repeat the process. Over here I'm doing a couple leaves with two wings as well as a three winged one. I don't have a lot of advice for how to do this. It's not difficult but it's really time consuming since wings have to be positioned carefully to create the appearance of leaves and flowers. The one thing that's really important is that you start at the top of the stem and work your way down so the following wings can overlap it slightly and create a cleaner finish. Also try to be conscious of which direction the wings are facing while you're doing this. Since they belong to a beetle, there are left wings and right wings, which have the curved edge on opposite sides. I think it looks nicer with the curved edge facing the stem, but it's all personal preference. Also, you can have the spike end of the wings facing out to create a more dramatic design, or even cut them into different shapes. Personally, I thought the wings were beautiful in their natural state, and that was part of the fun of working with them, but there are some stunning designs created out of cut wings. So now it's time to make the flowers, and for these you need six trimmed wings that are all around the same size. I sew the bottoms of the wings down with a bit of space between each one, and they are sewn around the embroidered circles. Once that's done, I use my fingers to arrange the wings so there's an even amount of space between the tops. Then I sew them down. I tended to use the smaller wings for the flowers since they don't look as nice when used with the leaves, but the smaller the wings, the less I trimmed them before using them as petals. As a side note, I would recommend ordering more wings than you think you'll need since they do range in size by quite a lot. You may also need more wings facing a certain direction, and ordering extras can help with that. Also, in case you are wondering, I'm sewing the wings on before beading since there are beads that will wrap around the ends of the wings, and the wings also overlap the vines in certain places, which means I can skip beading those portions. So it's faster to do the wings first and bead later on, or at least it was for me. Before sewing any wings on, secure your fabric into a hoop. Ideally, the hoop should be big enough for the entire design since you will not be able to move and reposition it once the wings and beads are sewn on. I couldn't quite do that here. Since I left this panel for last, there were completed designs on either side of it and the hoop wouldn't fit properly. But if you work from left to right or right to left, this won't be an issue. Now on to beading, which as far as I'm concerned is the easy part of this process. For this step, you'll need thread that matches your beads. Normal hand sewing thread is fine, a needle small enough to get through your beads, gold seed beads for the stems, I mixed these two shades together since I didn't have enough of a single type, green beads or beads that are similar in color to the wings, and then I used metallic beads for the flowers just to add a bit of texture, and I mixed these two colors as well. You'll also want some larger beads to use for the centers of the flowers, and if you're embroidering bugs, you'll want small dark beads to function as eyes. I'm sewing the gold beads on four or five at a time. The technique is simple, bring the needle up through the fabric, add a few beads, and bring it back down through the fabric. If there's a gap between where I brought the needle down and the beads, then I will bring the needle back down and up through the fabric a quarter inch away, then get four beads on and bring my needle back down through the last bead from the previous set. This makes them look continuous. I actually have a video all about that technique which I'll link down below, but I didn't use it too much for this since I didn't mind how the small gaps look. 
However, I did try and make the main stem look continuous, so I'd bead slightly past where a branch began, then go back and bead it. The side branches are all beaded the same way, but when I reached the beetle wings, I would use between four and seven green beads and sew them horizontally across the end point of the wings. Then sew another slightly smaller line of beads, so between three and six, just below that to taper it off. And if there are any gaps between the wings where you can see the white fabric, I would add a line of beads there as well, but this was only a problem with the cup-shaped flowers and the five wing leaves. So that's about it for beading the stems. You just have to repeat this process for an hour or so until it's done. The flowers are beaded a little differently. I start by sewing a larger bead to the center, then I sew four metallic beads between each wing to add some definition. And the center beads I'm using are ones I got from Beads World, but I think 6mm Pearls or 6mm Montes would look beautiful and are easier to come by. If you're wondering why I bother to embroider this design at all when beads would be covering it, it's because the embroidery makes the stem appear wider and adds depth to the beads. It's almost like the beads are the highlight of the stem with the darker embroidery on either side. I think the beads would look a lot less dramatic and defined without the embroidery beneath it, even if you use darker beads. So at this point I had beaded everything visible in the hoop. Hopefully at this point you can sit back and look at your glorious finished design, but since my hoop didn't encompass the entire design, I had more left to do. To finish the design I used a tiny hoop to support the sections left to work on, then removed the hoop and finished the beading. This isn't ideal, but if you have no other option it works pretty well, and the tiny hoop is so cute and fun to work with compared to the big one. So another optional but fun design are the bugs. Now you can bead these in the larger hoop, but it's easier to pull the fabric taut in the small hoop, so I chose to use it instead. I start by bringing my needle up through the fabric on the far side of the bug, then add 5 or 6 beads and bring the needle through the center of the bug, keeping the thread parallel to the bottom edge, then sew another smaller row of beads just above that from the center to the far edge. And repeat this again and again until one side of the bug is full, then repeat the entire process again on the other side, and try to keep the number of beads in each row symmetrical. Now take a medium sized wing and line the straight edge up against the top of the bug body. Secure the top of it first, then the bottom. Now take a larger wing and place it against the other side. You want the top of this wing to overlap the top of the other wing and have the points be symmetrical at the bottom. This is why you want a medium sized wing and a larger one. It won't work as well if they're the same size. Once it's secured, use the remaining thread to embroider antennas coming out of the tops of the wing. I drew these on for the first dozen, but then switched to freehanding, and I kind of like that they're all a little bit different. Now take the black beads and sew them onto the outer edge of the antennas, right near the wings. Placement is up to you, but I find the further apart the beads are, the derpier the bugs look, and I think that looks pretty cute, so I'm spacing mine pretty far apart. And that is a finished bug! Fun fact, there are more than 50 of these little guys on this costume. And that's it! A single panel is complete! There are 15 of these panels on the skirt, not to mention the embroidery on the bodices, so it's pretty much a miracle that I haven't gone insane yet. I will go back and surround the design with sequins, much like I did on the bodice to go with it, but I'm not sure I have enough sequins to do that, and I'm in desperate need of a break from this project, so it'll probably be a while before that happens. If you want to see updates on this project, then check out my blog and Instagram because I post on those more often than YouTube. Also, you should just check out the description box in general. In addition to my other sites, I'll have a ton of information down there about this project and the materials used. And if you have a question that isn't answered there, then please feel free to ask them down below and I will try to get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to all of you very soon.